Hello everyone, Hope Church Live. My name is Vale Horton and I am ending this wonderful series that we've been in of daring faith. And I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to really take in this last one, which is about happiness. And happiness is one of those words that encompasses a whole bunch of things, but we're gonna narrow in and relate it to a daring faith. This is an exciting message, and I want you to please press the subscribe button, and I want you to share this with anyone and everyone. This is going to be a hoot, we're gonna have fun, and we are going to ride the biggest wave of this entire series in Daring Faith. Before we talk about today's message, I want to ask you, what does happiness mean to you? Today's title, happiness, a gift for yourself and others. Happiness is one of those words we all love, right? The grass is always greener on the other side. Happiest place on earth, Disneyland. If I had a million dollars, I could buy a beach house in Malibu, right? We all should know the very famous song, Don't Worry Be Happy by Bobby McFerrin that goes, here's a little song I wrote, you might want to sing it note for note, the don't worry, be happy. If in every life we have some trouble, but when you worry, you make it double, don't worry, be happy. Happiness is a word we all love and we all wanna be happy. It makes us feel great and makes us dream of something better. It's also one of those words that can be really challenging to articulate. It's like the word love or peace or world. If I said to you, what does the world mean to you? What would you say? Uh, it's round. Or if I said, what does love mean to you? What would you say? Love means to me red roses. These are complex words with multiple meanings and I know happiness is one of them. Happiness is also very similar to the word joy. Are you ready for this? The definition of joy is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. Oh boy. So what's the difference between joy and happy? Joy is an inward contentment and happy is an outward expression. I think that is why the word joy comes up in the Bible 244 times and happy comes up only 28 times. I believe the Bible focuses on your, think inward, relationship with Christ. Today's message, we're going to talk about happiness, and we're going to zero in on the idea that happiness is a gift you can give to yourself, and it is a gift you can give to others. Okay, so first, we need to choose happiness. Haven't you heard the saying, happiness is a choice? Happiness for me has always been a choice, even when I was born. I ain't got no legs, my arms don't work right. I was adopted at birth because my parents didn't want me and they said I died. My bladder stopped working and I have to use a god awful catheter to relieve myself. I went through a terrible unexpected divorce. I can't find a job that I love for the last year and a half. And even as I wrote this message, my heart is breaking for my youngest son who's fighting legally for his freedom and future after being mostly falsely accused in an unjust situation. Where's the booze? I got robbed by a sweet old lady on a motorized cart. I didn't even see it Come. Oh. Harry? No. Harry? No. Come on, Harry. You're up. It gets worse, Lloyd. 
My parakeet Petey? Huh? He's dead. Oh. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Harry. What happened? His head fell off. His head fell off? Yeah, he was pretty old. Oh. That's it. I've had it with this dump. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets' heads are falling off. That was one of my favorite movie clips of all time. Raising four children and growing multiple businesses, there were days I would come home and shout, pets' heads are falling off. Through all my circumstances, I always chose to be happy. Now let's talk about the Apostle Paul. Paul's daring faith led him on a special mission, to be an apostle to the Gentiles. In fulfilling this calling, he endured so much suffering, including beatings, shipwreck, stonings, and arrests for simply preaching the gospel. Paul was imprisoned several times during his ministry, and almost everywhere he went, there were people who wanted him in prison and dead. Paul wrote a very famous letter to the Philippians under house arrest and as a prisoner in Rome. The entire letter showed him happy. Paul wrote this letter to encourage his fellow servants living in Philippi to not be discouraged, to not focus on, to not focus on all the Christ haters and to be proud and to choose love and live for Christ. Paul had faced severe hardships, poverty, beatings, illness, and even his current imprisonment in every circumstance, he chose to be content and happy and selfless. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if they have any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Happiness is a choice. The verse in Paul's letter perfectly exemplifies that happiness is a choice. Meditate on good always. Life is difficult, but it's how you choose to look at it. Happiness is also a gift of joy you give to yourself. I told you I was adopted. I ended up meeting my biological parents when I was 19 years old. If there's anyone in this room that has or sometimes doubts God, you are going to want to listen extra carefully to this story. The only information I knew about my biological family was their nationality and health records, like does heart disease run in the family. I also knew, that their, last, I also knew their last name because in the adoption file, there was this one time that their last name was not blacked out by a Sharpie. One day here in the desert, I went out to lunch with some friends from work. We went to Carl's Jr. and ate inside the restaurant. At that time, I walked in prosthetic legs and used crutches. I was 5'11", if you can imagine that. When I walked into Carl's, a man sitting in a booth looked at me dead in the eyes. Dead in the eyes. Normally, people would always look me up and down. And I could see them thinking, what am I looking at? What's the matter with this guy? Well, when I sit sat down and I asked my buddy, hey, what's the deal with the guy behind me to the left? Those words just came out of my mouth. I don't know where they came from. My buddy responds, I don't know, but he's staring at you. I then said, well, maybe that's my biological father. My buddy said, no way. What are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to go talk to him. So I got up went to him and said, excuse me, sir, is your last name Tenet? And he stood up and said, yes, Dale, it is. That day, he had flown from Mexico City, where he lived, to the desert and was only here for an hour to pick up a car to drive up to Portland, Oregon for his mother's 75th birthday. His plane was even delayed a day due to the volcano that erupted in Mexico that put a whole bunch of ash in the air. Later in that day that I met him, I introduced myself to my biological mom by telephone. I said, hello, my name is Vale, and you gave birth to me 19 years ago. 
she cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and kept saying over and over and over again, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, Tommy. I told her that in order for this relationship to get off to a great start, that she could not be sorry. That what she did was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. And that she couldn't call me Tommy, which was my birth name, that she had to call me Vale, because I love my name Vale, because I'm happy. When I had my own biological child, uh, I really couldn't believe how they put me up for adoption. I just went through that reality. But the point of this story is that I'm so happy I was adopted, that my life has been perfectly imperfect. Being happy and knowing God has my life gives me deep-rooted joy, which is totally a gift I give to myself every day. I'm so happy that everything in my life has happened the way it has. The book of Philippians conveys a powerful message about the secret of contentment, happiness, and joy. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14, Paul says, Note that I have already obtained this and am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. But one thing I do is forgetting what lies behind and straight and focus on going forward. I press on toward the goal for the prize, the upward call of God and Christ Jesus. True joy is not based on circumstances. The key to lasting contentment is found through a relationship with Jesus. This is the divine perspective Paul wanted to communicate to the Philippians. Christians can experience joy in suffering just as Jesus suffered. Christ is the ultimate example for believers. Through following his patterns of humility and sacrifice, we can find joy in all circumstances. Paul is saying happiness provides contentment in your life so that you can live every day forward in joy. And that's the way I live my life, and that's the way you should live your life. Happiness is a gift, you, is a gift of a relationship with God to others. Back when I was around 24 years of age, I met a fellow co cohort named John. John was a devout Mormon. His entire family, brothers, sisters, parents, were leaders in the Mormon faith. He was all Mormon. Where he worked was in the same building where I worked. One day, John and I were chatting, and he asked me, why am I always so happy? I told him, it was my faith in God. I don't remember all that we discussed further, other than every time I talked to John, it was usually more than 30 minutes, sometimes an hour. You get the point. A couple months later, I was talking to John, and he mentions that he became a Christian and left the Mormon faith. He said it was my happiness and the happiness of a handful of my friends that led him to discover Jesus in the Christian faith. It's a gift. The joy you have is a gift of God to others. Several years later, I worked with one of John's brothers, Dan. Dan, his wife, and their kids were all devout Mormon. While working closely with Dan in a nonprofit, he and his entire family gave their lives to Jesus and became all in Christians. Dan has done numerous missionary activities and is now a youth pastor. Hopefully, John and Dan's parents don't hate me and they choose happiness through all of this. And going back to Paul in Philippians chapter 2, verse 17 through 18, it says, But I will rejoice even if I lose my life pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice. And I will share your joy. Paul continued to preach the gospel and used every opportunity to share the truth of Jesus, even with prison guards who hated him. Life isn't easy. In closing... Take your entire life, take all of those difficult times in your life and choose happiness. It will give you joy. And then share that happiness with the world. Share it with the world. Because when people see happiness 
They're going to wonder why and they're going to find Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate example. Through following his patterns of humility and sacrifice, we can find happiness in all circumstances. Happiness in Greek means a good spirit. Let's conclude today's message with Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say in capital letters, rejoice with an exclamation point. Go in happiness. Let's pray. Dear Father, oh, dear Father, please, please, for all the people that aren't happy, I pray that they look at their lives and go, I can be happy. I can if I choose it. And Lord, for the people that are happy, I pray that they smile double, triple, quadruple the times they normally smile. I pray that they have the ability to look people in the eyes and have tremendous eye contact. I pray that they share that happiness with others because happiness and joy have the ability to be like a business card to the entire world that says John 3.16, love Jesus with all your heart and all your mind. I don't think the verse says exactly that, but yeah. Happiness is the same as throwing out all sorts of business cards that invite people to love Jesus. And I pray for that. I pray for that today, I pray for it this week, and I pray for it forever. We live in a world with so much pain. You turn on the news and there's so much pain. And if you're a happy person, you don't have to be happy about those situations, but if you're a happy person, if you choose joy, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, if you choose happiness, you will create an inner joy that will just exude a love for Jesus. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame. You call my
For listening. I hope this message motivated you, inspired you, but also changed you. Uh, it's important that when you invite Christ into your life, that you are a changed person, that you have God in you, and that you want to spread that God all over the world. And this message was brought to you by Hope, and we would love for you to make an investment in all that we're doing. We are changing hearts and minds for God not only under our own roofs, but in throughout the entire community. And hopefully this message is actually viewed by people all over the world. And so please make huge gifts. This week, there are three ways to give. One is to go to hopepd.org and to donate online. Two, you could donate by mailing a investment at 45900 Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. And then there's a third way to give, which is the easiest. It's just to text 84321. Again, text 84321. We're creating a difference in all lives, children, adults. And we thank you so much for being a part of Hope Family. And thank you for listening and thank you for being you and have a wonderful week and we'll see you next week.